Um, the programs, Nevada Senior Services is a nonprofit. We have many, many programs for seniors and caregivers. Um, the programs that I work on are senior wellness. So um, we usually, uh, we're doing our wellness programs as outreach in person. And of course, when COVID-19 kicked in, um, we had to jump in and make it on telehealth um, via Zoom. So that was canceling meetings and, and working with all these different agencies that we go to in the community. And, um, and I developed a new program because typically we do um, depression and sleep and uh, nutrition and general wellness and exercise. Um, so I developed a new program called, uh, at the time, called Chasing Away the Corona Blues. And I thought it was something that we needed to do to reach out to seniors because um, we were very, very concerned about their isolation. And um, it doesn't, we don't talk about, you know, hand sanitizing and masks. It's really about how to cope and how to stay connected. And that was really a main focus um, because it's such an incredible concern and loneliness and isolation among seniors and in Nevada in particular, because there's a lot of people who live here that aren't connected to family. You know, they move here a lot of times by themselves. And then, you know, during COVID, you know, their family couldn't come visit them. So it really became important to reach out and, and connect with those, those seniors. It's getting a little better um, now, but in the beginning, a lot of anxiety. People were scared. And uh, there's a lot of information out there that wasn't always correct information, and, you know. And, um, and then people needed resources. So our organization, we're also uh, the Care Connection Resource Center for the state uh, for Southern Nevada. So we teamed with um, some of the programs through the state, like Nevada CAN, which was the COVID aging network um, to get services to seniors. So part of that was connecting them with our wellness programs. We also have a geriatric assessment, medical assessment program and um, that went to telehealth as opposed to in person. So we received a lot of those referrals that came in through Nevada 211 or um, the site they set up for those services, including food insecurity, uh, housing, um, information about getting vaccines, uh, stress and anxiety. You know, there were different components. Um, I specifically was handling um, the medical inquiries um, and give people information where they could find affordable health care and that we're offering telehealth services because people were afraid to go out. So um, we really looked at the whole picture. So there was no wrong door as well. So if they checked off something and then in our discussions with them, if they needed other assistance, um, like the Delivering with Dignity program that came out of COVID-19, we were a partner with that um, to refer people to immediate prepared foods uh, to seniors who, who couldn't go out and didn't have any other resources. And then we work with them through the Resource Center to help them get on a more permanent program if necessary. But it was really just to meet those immediate needs, you know, through that that first several months when people were really, you know, scared, they were just afraid. And um, so we were one of the safety nets there. And um, it's, it's, it's been, it was scary for everyone in the beginning, but, um, and I think I just spoke to you about this, that it, it really became a positive experience. And I think with a lot of um, the emergency services that we all put in place and, and had to juggle around quickly to get information and services to seniors. Um, there's a lot of positive connections and, and, and things that we went, wow, this is something that we could probably continue doing even as we rotate back into in-person services. Um, because there's a lot of people that are still gonna be isolated, that are still gonna need these services that aren't aware of it. Um, just connecting people to the internet and that have never done it or to a telehealth appointment on their smartphone. Um, so that was opening huge doors because then they could Zoom with their families that might be out of state and were worried about them. Um, and that people that can't come to our center in, um, in Las Vegas that might live in Pahrump and they're homebound, they could participate in both our wellness programs and our geriatric medical assessment program, as well as you know, other service needs. 
This program is funded by the State Aging and Disability Services Division. Um, we started it about almost 10 years ago, I think. Um, and it's really, it's not, um, we don't write prescriptions or order tests, but what it is is a very thorough um, examination and assessment for older adults 60 and older. And it has a geriatric physician, uh, Dr. Julie Zacharias Simpson, who's um, gratefully lends us her talents and, and knowledge. Um, she's a professor at Toro University Medical School. And Dr. Dr. Robin Otti, who's the head of their occupational therapy department, as well as our staff, um, uh, Linda Holpuck, who's our RN and my, my partner in the program, and uh, Marcy Cherick, who's our social worker that works for our adult daycare centers as well as through this program. So we do um, an overall look at both what's going on with um, the patient and if they come with a caregiver, we see what the caregiver's needs are too. And that's part of other programs that we offer um, through our organization is a lot of caregiver support and education as well. Um, and many of, most of these programs are offered free of charge as long as you're within um, the age you know, area because of how the grant is presented to us, where the funding comes from. Um, but anyone 60 years of age and older, for sure, caregiving programs are typically, there's no restriction, just that you're a caregiver, some specific to memory loss, um, people who are caring for someone with memory loss. Um, but the, the GAP program, we call it, um, is a wonderful tool in conjunction with someone's doctor. So we not only you know, do vitals, do a whole medical history, look at all their medications. A geriatrician is usually very in tune to certain things that relate to seniors um, because our metabolisms change as we get older. And um, sometimes even medications you've been on for years don't function the same way because your body is functioning a little differently. So they might recommend suggestions. Um, sometimes there's more fall risk um, in some of the medications that people take. Uh, so just to be aware of that, might make recommendations to their doctor. Have you tried XYZ, you know, medication instead um, or switching, you know, or de decreasing. Um, things have changed over the years for what the guidelines are for blood pressure and even diabetes, um, because sometimes in especially much older adults, if their blood pressure gets too low, they're much more at risk of falling, which is really serious. Um, so those are the kind of things we look at. We look at their mental health, how their mood is, are they depressed, um, how their cognition is, are they forgetting things? Sometimes as we get older, we forget. That's sort of, you know, it happens. Um, but people are sometimes fearful. So what we do is a cognitive screening as well. And, and especially these days when everyone's full of anxiety and stress and isolation, all these things get amplified sometimes. So it's good sometimes just to ease your mind. Um, we, over the years, have had different memory um, programs where we do these assessments and we use it kind of, it's like a, think of it like a mammogram for women. Uh, we get a, a baseline. And then if you do it annually or, you know, every couple of years and see, and when there's a, a significant change, then it lets you know there's something to maybe look at. Um, and then Dr. Ati, she will um, see what's going on with their function, their balance. Do they have trouble seeing? Do they have trouble opening jars? Are they, do they have the correct uh, grab bars and things in their home? Um, so we really kind of see everything that's going on. The social worker also uh, sees what other services they might need or qualify for, both things that we can offer or through state or county programs that she can, or the VA programs that might help them or support them. So we really, like I said, get a very comprehensive look. Uh, in person, this was about two hours. Um, now we do still do it at least two hours. It's a little longer on Zoom, just the connectivity and everything. Um, but we break it up when we, when we do do it in Zoom, uh, we break it up into two uh, and we do it in pairs with the social worker and the nurse. And then uh, we'll do the doctor and the occupational therapist. And we're hoping as, you know, thankfully the COVID numbers are dropping that we will be able to start doing more in person. So we're working on how to transfer that and keep it safe, um, hopefully in the next several weeks. 
Um, but we will continue to have a component on uh, telehealth because like I said, I, I think it's been really helpful. Um, we've had families from out of state that can actually be in on the doctor's visit if they have concerns and the patient agrees. So, you know, they don't feel, because what you don't see or hear is can be very frightful, you know, and uh, sometimes the, the patient is also comforted by knowing that their family member is there and they can see them on the Zoom. So, like I said, it's, it's uh, overall, it's been pretty positive, I think, and helpful. Um, we don't always have answers to everything, but we certainly can give them the tools and the direction. Um, so when they're completed, and then we send our reports with their permission to the primary care physician. And a lot of people um, are sort of afraid of like learning about, they think, oh, meditation, yoga, but we do things in a real basic way uh, that it's something simple that anyone can do. You can find your own method. Um, we give them lots of online resources to check out as well. And it kind of takes that stigma away from people who've never done it. Like you don't have to be in a pretzel or <laughs> sit with your legs crossed on the floor. Um, you know, it's just about taking a break. And, and being aware of what's going on in your mind and your body and just take a step back. And that's been really helpful, even for me personally, getting through, especially those early days um, when we were all so you know, scared and isolated. So that's been really, really helpful. And I think sometimes that's you know, the part that really touches the people who are participating. Um, the one thing I ask in the uh, Chasing Away Corona Blues is I always focus on the positive, like what's one positive thing that has happened in your life since the pandemic? Because I, that's the whole idea is to kind of shift to more positive thinking because our minds can get away and things get, you know, just magnified when they're not really as bad as you think here. They found like there's some people that are like just amazing that, you know, started a, a group they play games online, um, they uh, have yoga. Some people like a yoga teacher that was in a state that they might've come from before and now they can Zoom with them. You know, so I, I think the whole idea is to give them those opportunities. And the one thing that um, I really wanna work on in the future is to get more people connected because even people who have say, smartphones and have the capability. Um, they're afraid, older adults are sometimes still afraid. And there's some programs um, that, that came out of the Nevada CAN initiative like NEST, where they have sort of peer social groups as well and they can help people get on Zoom. We do it personally for anybody who participates with us. And that's a victory again, you know, um, and I think that's something that everyone needs to pay attention to and how important it is to get more older adults, technology savvy. And there's a lot of new products out there to, that can make it as simple or complex. But um, Vivek Murthy, who, uh, Dr. Vivek Murthy, who was the Surgeon General under um, the Obama administration and is now on Biden's uh, COVID-19 task force, he did incredible studies on loneliness and how it affects not just our emotional health, but our physical health. It's just like sleep or medication or good nutrition. Um, it's something we really have to look at in the future and pay attention to just like anything else with our health. So I think something like that, because it was so obvious that so many people were isolated, that it kind of honed in on that and people are paying more attention. And that's a plus, that's a plus. One is get outside. <laughs> Maybe when now today it's blowing like crazy, but, um, you know, get outside, get in the sun that can improve your mood. I notice it myself when I was working and trying to get everything online and I didn't go outside for days. I was having some issues. You know, you've got to get out. It's good. You know, if you can just take a little walk or just sit outside, get that vitamin D, get that sun on your face. It helps your sleep. Um, it helps with your mood. Uh, people who live in gray climates, they look at light boxes because that helps with their mood. Um, the other thing is staying connected, call a friend, help others, check in on each other, think of fun activities to do. I have some friend, a friend that we, she and I do a, a movie group and we take 
turns picking a movie every week or two and and we just call sometimes and discuss it and it's something to look forward to plan for positive events sometimes when you're in a funk you know you need to kind of say okay i'm going to do five pleasant events this day and it could be something as simple as cleaning out a drawer you know or straightening something or sitting outside in the sun or calling your grandchildren after you know school time um, and just saying hi for five minutes. Um, the other thing, like I said, being intentional, being intentional. Um, we have about 40% of what makes us happy is in our control. So whether it's even just sitting back and taking a breath, you know, concentrating on your breath, distracting yourself from all the chaos going on, getting your information, um, but not watching news all day not watch out for social media, you know, um, limit that. I think everyone definitely needs to be informed, but too much is too much. And uh, those are just some simple things that can help, um, you know, eating better. You know, you can have that little piece of chocolate once in a while, but too much sugar, not good for you, you know. Um, and again, you know, staying connected, get good rest. Those are some real, real key things you can do.